right, good to see you this evening. Crystal's mixing it up. She's changing sides on us. She's, she's gone leftist on us, at least my leftist. So, all right, good to see you here. Hope you survived the wind and rain. Let's stand and sing something that is so true. We are so blessed. 564, if you need the hymn book, it'll be up on the screen. 564, we are so blessed. Let's all stand. Good evening. It's great to have you here. Thank you for making time for prayer meeting tonight. I uh, don't really have a lot of announcements. Just want to remind the men that did sign up and boys that signed up for the men's prayer breakfast I did uh, this Saturday from 8 to 10. And appreciate your prayers for me. I'll be bringing the challenge from God's word on Saturday morning and just pray for a great time. We're just praying for revival in our individual churches. Uh, there's some physical needs that are shared, but we really try to keep it to spiritual needs, praying for the lost, praying for revival in our different churches. We need revival in our local churches for um, our, you know, the souls of the people that are here on a regular basis, just to be, or even the ones that might just be attending and have a relationship with the Lord, but just need their soul set afire for the Lord. So, um, Please, please be in prayer for that meeting to be an encouragement to those men. And then also, uh, Resurrect, I wanted to throw out as well that the following Saturday, uh, we will have the prayer walk here in the neighborhood. And so we'll meet at my office at 1030 and uh, looking forward to meeting some new neighbors that we have here in the neighborhood and revisiting some others. Um, also, on, sa on Sunday at 4 o'clock, the... Um, it, it's not just the Berean Sunday School class, but a majority of them are from that Berean Sunday School class that have been going over to the gardens. Uh, and they're going to start doing a worship service every Sunday at 4 o'clock over at the gardens um, assisted living uh, facility. And you are all welcome to participate. So if you would like to come, I think the more the merrier just to fill the room and get, you know, give some excitement to the to the residents that are there so we'd love to um uh, love for everybody to know about that and just uh with the teagues if you can let todd know about that with his mom being there he may not know that we're going to start that here this next sunday i'm sure he might want to come so please be in prayer for that ministry at four o'clock at the at the gardens is there anything else brother johnny you want to say about that all right yeah, just be in prayer for this new ministry. There'll be a great encouragement to his residents and also an opportunity to share the gospel with them. So, Oh, okay. All right. If someone would like to come and lead the singing. Um, I, I've done that in the past, and it, it's a good group of people. That it's amazing how many of them can't, can't see the words anymore, but they know it. They know the, the words of the hymns in their heart. So they can actually sing at least the choruses on most of the songs that we sing. So, um, yeah, so you, you let me know if you don't have anybody, okay? We want to make sure that you're supported over there. Um, I, I'll be willing to do that if I need to. So, but feel free. Anyone else want to step in that has any kind of song leading experience, please do that. All right, well, it's great to be here tonight. Let's go ahead and ask the Lord's blessing, and then we'll get right into our prayer meeting. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence with singing. And Lord, you are worthy of our praise. 
Father, there is no one like you, and you have blessed us so much through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that uh, we are seated in the heavenlies with Christ Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, for all that he did on the cross of Calvary for us, and we thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to indwell each one of your children and how he wants to illuminate us when we hear your word shared that we would understand what your will is for our life and just how blessed we are we pray you'll bless this prayer meeting tonight may your will be done may you be glorified in jesus name i pray amen all right i can't i'm gonna keep this up here brother paul if you came in uh, tonight you didn't get one of these i was requested to have this i usually just supply this to the piano sound room and myself and of course paul um, but anyway if it benefit you to have this we're going to be looking at uh, numbers chapter six tonight if you want to look there numbers chapter six and while you're turning there i want to start out by just sharing a story of a married couple that unfortunately their marriage ended in divorce and they had a son together, and uh, it really got ugly with this divorce. And the wife, after the divorce, set it all up so that the father could never have contact with his son until he was an adult at the age of 18. And the father attempted. He tried to have a close relationship with his son, but the, but the wife kept their son away from their father for 18 years that that son carried the name the last name of his father but he had no assurance in his own heart that his dad ever loved him well after 18 years he was graduating from high school and because now it was legally possible for his dad to have a relationship with him he showed up at his high school graduation um, before then he wanted to meet with his son he had something very important that he wanted to share with him. When he sat down and he talked with his son, first of all, he reassured him that he had loved him all those years. He just could not have that contact with him that he really had wanted. But he knew there was going to be a day when that legal constraint would be removed and that he would, uh, and he wanted to be prepared to not just say, I've loved you all those years, but to be able to prove it. And what he had done each year since his son had been really barred from him is he set aside several thousand dollars each year in addition to his income for him to go to college one day. And so for 18 years, he set aside thousands of dollars each year. And when he met with his son, he was able to tell him, son, I want to bless you with all this money. You, with all this money, you will have a full-ride scholarship to go to any college you want to. And we, as God's people, can live like possibly that son did, not knowing that his father ever loved him, maybe doubting if his father ever cared for him or wanted to benefit him in life at all or if he was a deadbeat dad. And I'm sure the Lord thought that about the nation of Israel as they have already mount, met at the Mount of Sinai. They've already betrayed him, creating the golden calf, right? Already disobeyed him. Some have already been judged because of that uh, infidelity. And then... As they are setting out, they're about to set out from Mount Sinai to uh, go to the promised land. There's, there's numbering and there's order and there's a design to where they camp and how they're going to leave and everything. And in Numbers chapter 6, the Lord gives um, some instruction about a Nazarite vow um, and how this Nazarite vow for those people who volunteer to do it would set them apart and identified themselves with the Lord. And right on the coattails of that, he says, Aaron, I want you as the high priest and your sons who will follow you to pray a blessing on my people. And why did he do that? He wanted them to know 
that he loved them, that he desired to prosper them on their journey of faith. And you know what? That's a very similar metaphor to what we're going through right now. We've been set apart from the power of sin, nation of Israel, uh, Egypt, right? From the slavery of sin. And we have a personal relationship with God. And it's not exactly a one-on-one -on -one parallel. But God has a will for our life. And we're supposed to take that journey step by step by faith. And that's exactly what the nation of Israel is about to do. But to prepare them daily, the high priest, Aaron, and eventually his sons that would take his place, we're supposed to pray this blessing on the people each morning. And we're going to look at that in just a moment. But before I do, I want to make an application, I want to make a connection that I've never made when I have looked at this passage before. It was um, last week that we are reading through this in our Bible reading for this year. And it struck me that uh, because in the past I've always looked at this and I've heard this quoted um, in church services. I've heard a lot of charismatics that love to just say, the Lord bless you. And, and they recite this Arianic um, or Aaronic uh, blessing on people. I'm like, man, I, I don't know, I kind of feel uncomfortable doing, you know, rehearsing a prayer and saying stuff like that. But I mean, there's people who do that all the time. And I'm like, am I supposed to be doing that as a pastor? Um, and do I want to associate with that kind of um, movement? And anyway, I was, um, I, I was asking that question when I was reading Numbers chapter 6 last week. And the Lord brought to my mind that I, that I have a greater high priest. And that's Jesus Christ. And, and, I, and, I, and I remembered that, you know, Jesus is my high priest as a son of the promise. I've trusted in the, the promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so I have a high priest. And it reminded me of uh, the scripture in Hebrews chapter 4, where it says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Uh, that we would just remain, keep our confidence in following Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 8, it talks about this in a similar way, but it gives some information about that. It says, who is he that condemneth? Talking about the sufferings that we go through, the trials we go through, uh, people that condemn us and judge us. It is Christ that died, the Holy Spirit says, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. In, in Numbers chapter 6, God's desiring Aaron and his sons to pray or intercede for the nation of Israel so that they're reassured that God desires to prosper them as a people, as, as they trust in him, as they yield to him and his will for their life. And that's in the law of Moses. But for us as God's people, I, I was just really encouraged that God desires to bless you and me through his son, Jesus Christ, our high priest. Isn't that a blessing? That he's interceding for us? And I wondered, could he be interceding for us and praying this prayer for us? I can't prove it, but he's our high priest. Why wouldn't he, right? What was the point of them praying this blessing? If you look at verse 27, I'm sorry, sound room. I know I got a little ahead of myself. But verse 27 says, And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. The, the high priest and his sons, when they performed this, uh, this uh, responsibility, they were supposed to put the name of God on the people of Israel. What does that mean? It means that they should be identified with who God is. They should be identified with who God is. And how was that ministry, how was that responsibility fulfilled? Through the ministry of prayer. And I'm so thankful that the Lord Jesus Christ, he wants to put the name of God on us. And he already has. We're in Christ, right? But he desires to bless us in our relationship with him. And so often we can take that relationship for granted. And we can sometimes doubt whether the Lord Jesus really wants to prosper us in life, whether he wants to really bless us. 
And so I, on that basis, and on that foundation, I just want to look at this uh, blessing. Let me go ahead and read verses 22 through 27 so you get the whole passage of Scripture here. Verse 22, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Going back to verse 24, the Lord said, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. Uh, first of all, uh, the Lord, you think about how what the Lord desires and how he desires to benefit us through the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus desires to bless us in certain ways. First of all, with his care each day. Jesus desires to bless us with his care each day. And that's what verse 24 is saying. I, I can imagine Jesus just interceding on our behalf and saying, Father, may John... May John Acker, pastor of Eastside Baptist Church, realize how much I care for him. Lord, may he, uh, Father, may he be directed to seek the care that I'm, that, that I'm offering him each day. You know, when Crystal and I have had someone take, keep our kids, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that they're, you know, putting them under lock and key somewhere and protecting them. Um, they're actually caring for them, caring for them. You know, if they need to be fed, they'll give them something to eat. They need to have a bandage put on a wound, they'll do that for them. You know what? We have, a, we have a Savior in heaven who's interceding for us, and he wants to bless us, but we've got to be willing to trust in his grace each day. We have to be willing to trust in his grace each day. And I'm so thankful, like, our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, wants to bless you and me with his care. But he wants us, but we have to trust in him. He's not going to force it down our throats. I know that God does care, and he, let, he has rain fall on the just and the unjust. But there is a care and a concern that the Lord Jesus wants to um, prosper us with. But it only comes when we're walking in fellowship with him when we're trusting in him. Isn't that a blessing that he wants to care for you and me? Uh, that's what we just sang about when we were talking, uh, as we were singing, we are so blessed. We are so blessed. Um, I want to, at this time, ask Brother Paul to come, and he's going to lead us in page 47. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Do you believe that? Isn't that a blessing? That's why we're here to pray. Seven, if you want the hymn book, it'll be up on the screen too. Let's all stand. God will take care of you. Hymn 47. <laughs>
And I am so glad as First Tim, uh, First Peter chapter five verse seven says that we can cast all our cares upon Him, for He cares for us. And that's what we're doing here tonight. So glad that we have a, a risen Savior. He's not in the grave, folks. He's sitting on the right hand of the throne of our Father in heaven. And he's not just sitting there twiddling his thumbs. He's busy. He's interceding for you and me, and he is ruling and reigning as the God of the universe. And one day he's going to rule here on the earth. Um, and so I'm so thankful that he is in control of our lives, and, and he wants us to be trusting him on a day-to-day -day basis. And he wants to bless us um, as we trust in him. And he wants to, uh, our Father wants to bless us through his Son, Jesus Christ. But we got to trust uh, for, in his grace uh, for each day. And so, first of all, we talked about how Jesus wants to bless you with, with his care, with his care each day. Um, I know that this passage in number 6 is talking about Aaron, but um, I believe that it's ultimately fulfilled in the high priestly ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, the next verse in verse 25 says, And the Lord make his face shine upon thee, and be gracious unto thee. Facial expressions convey a lot. When Paul, you lead the singing, and you see people's facial expressions, you wonder if they really mean what they're saying, right? Sometimes. Um, when I come home and I have some things on my mind at the dinner table, Crystal can look at me and I can tell through her eyes she's wondering, are you here? Right? Um, our facial expressions, they communicate things, body language. And here, uh, the, the Lord, our Heavenly Father, he wants, us to, he wants us to know that He desires to make His face shine upon us. Unfortunately, as a father, sometimes my face has shown anger sometimes, and my kids can tell if I am, um, what would you say, um, cranky <laughs> by my facial express expressions um, because I might be tired, and they know, you know, not to fight with one another or aggravate one another. This is not a good time. Uh, to anger dad uh, not that I um, am violent or anything like that but you can see that kind of stuff on your father's face I remember seeing that sometimes even with my dad's face when sometimes I, dis I, I saw disappointment on his face but it was great joy I remember when running a 5k and when I was approaching the finishing line seeing my dad there smiling as I was finishing that race and it gave me extra gusto to keep going when I wanted to throw up you know and I don't know about you but it just encourages me and reassures me in my father's love that he wants to he wants his face to shine upon us what what kind of imagery comes to your mind when you think about a face shining upon you I, I, that's what I think of is a smile. A smile is what I think of. And I would love to have my, I think my, our Heavenly Father wants to have that smiling face. And some of you whose fathers are already gone on to be with the Lord, I'm sure you can remember when your dad was smiling, when his face shined upon you. I want you to know your Heavenly Father Wants, he, he, he desires for his face to shine upon you each day, each day. And Jesus, I believe, does pray that we would be blessed uh, with his compassion. He wants to shower his compassion on us. He wants to stoop down and bless us. It says, the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. That word gracious means to stoop down to someone that's inferior. And that only comes through walking in fellowship with him. And again, isn't it such a blessing that I am his and he is mine, as the hymn says? But he desires, he desires to walk in close fellowship with me. The only person that ever does rob me of that blessing is me, is me. 
Isn't it a blessing that Jesus desires to shower, to bless you with his compassion? And oh, shouldn't we trust in it, even when things are tough and we grow weary? Um, at this time, um, I'm going to go ahead and read verse 26 and 27, and then we'll get into our time of praying for one another. Verse 26 says, The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. You know, the Lord, thirdly, once he desires not only to, uh, to bless us with his care and his compassion through the Lord Jesus Christ, but he wants to bless us with his countenance, with his countenance. What does that mean? It means his attention. And when, he, when his attention is on us, when we're walking in fellowship with him, what is it? He gives us his his peace or his composure. And I, I, I kind of shy away from peace. I was going to say calmness, but then I thought everybody in the room would, would, ima- would imagine this. Oh, I would be free from any hardship, free from any conflict in life. And that's not what shalom means, okay? Shalom means, you know, prosperity, goodness, and sometimes that is in the middle of conflict and hardship. But you know, I thought this word composure was a better word. You know, we can have composure. It means that our feelings and our minds are not, um, are not torn down. Our, what we believe about God, what we feel about God, what we think about God is not betrayed when we're going through times of great stress or hardship. But you know what? We're blessed with his composure when we trust in his countenance, when we trust in his countenance. And I'm, I'm so thankful that the Lord Jesus desires this for us. He wants to daily bless you and me. But the choice is really up to you and me. Will we trust him each day? I love this picture of our Savior each and every day interceding for us. You know, sometimes we hope that our friends and our, our loved ones here in the church family pray for each us each day but I'll tell you right now I'm sure each one of us misses a day to pray for the church or may hardly ever pray for one another in the church but I know someone who is always praying for you and interceding for you and that's Jesus Christ and he wants to shower you with his care and with his compassion and with his composure I think about the Lord Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane under great stress sweating you know, great drops of blood because of all the stress he was under. But he, even in that time, his composure was still steady and prayed, not my will, but thine will be done. And so I just want to encourage you, trust in the Lord because he's interceding for you. Are you trusting in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ for his grace each day? When you do, you'll be able to enjoy the peace that he wants you to have. Brother Paul, will you come and lead us in that last song, Like a River Glorious, Like a River Glorious. It's uh, number 494. All right, let's stand. 494, Like a River Glorious.
this time we're going to uh, share some prayer requests and then go to prayer. Um, what's been given to us, um, I'm going to go ahead and share with you. And if you didn't write anything on the clipboard, if you write it, uh, write that down so we can I can pray for you uh, this week. Uh, I'll have this clipboard out in the foyer um, after our prayer meeting. Mark Greider, if you have a piece of paper to write this down, Mark Greider. Uh, has some heart issues. Actually, I guess you can do it on the back of that uh, p- sheet of paper I gave you. So you should have that with you. Um, Mark Greider has heart issues. This is uh, John and Paul's Paul Cook's cousin. And then also if you'd pray for Jen Thiessen, she has gallbladder surgery. And this is, um, uh, she's a mother and wife and all that stuff now. Um, she was a college student when we knew her. Um, she was at Pensacola Christian College back in the day when we were at Arvada Baptist. But she has a gallbladder surgery. She's a, she's out in Colorado, in Arvada. And she has a baby that she won't be able to carry for four weeks uh, and take care of. So if you just pray for her husband, Caleb. And also, if you pray for Barbara, I'm assuming this is Barbara Overcash. Whoever wrote that. It is Barbara Overcash. Uh, has a broken tooth, and she has uh, procedures tomorrow. So if you just pray for her. And then also, we have a request for snow, folks. And temperatures are dropping. And this person that's been praying for snow really wants some snow if it be the Lord's will. So um, if you would just pray for snow if it be God's will. All right. Um, that is all that I uh, have for you at this time, and if you'll break up into groups of maybe two or three and pray together and encourage you to perhaps pray with uh, someone you haven't prayed with before, get to know them during that time of prayer.
Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we've had to come into your presence and to be able to cast our um, cares upon you. Father, we ask that you would bless us with, um, as we depart, Lord, that you would um, go before us and that you would um, not just, you know, bless us with your um, compassion and your your care and, and the composure that your son, the Lord Jesus, had, but uh, you would also give us conversations that we can have with the lost and that you would give us boldness and the confidence that we need to be able to share our faith and that we might hear this week of one that has come to Christ as their personal Savior. I just commit each one in this room and those that might be praying with us on Facebook uh, to you, Lord, that you would use us as lights for the Lord Jesus. In his name I pray. Amen. You are dismissed.